So we're continuing the reading. So now Yaakov Bok is desperate and uh, he's looking, he's thinking what's going to happen, who's going to prove that in fact he helped an old man. So he's going over the events. When the fixer remembered where he was, he tore at his hands with his nails and he tore at his face. The snore awoke with a gasp. Akimich, he cried out, formerly a tailor. I am innocent, he whimpered. Don't beat me. The other one snickered. Have you got a cigarette? Potoshkin, the former tailor, asked the one on the other mattress. A piece of butt. Fuck yourself, said the blinker, a man with bloodshot eyes. Have you got a cigarette? Akimich asked Yakov. My bag is empty, said the fixer. He held it up. I'll bet you don't know why I'm here, Akimich said. No, neither do I. It's a mistaken identity with me. I never did what they said I did. May they choke to death on their mother's milk. They mistook me for an anarchist. He began to weep. I'm here because of a pack of pamphlets, or whatever you call them, Potoshkin said. Some poor bastard, a man with wild eyes and a thick great coat, says to me on Institushki Street, Brother, he says, I have to piss, so hold my bundle a minute. When I come back here, I'll slip you a five kopeck piece on my honor. What can you say to a man who has to piss? Sorry for the language. Could I say no to that? Then he might piss on me. So I held on to his bundle, and in two minutes, a pig-eyed detective comes running across the street and jabs a gun in my gut so hard it almost bursts, busts. And then he marches me off to the secret police without listening to a word I say. When we get there, Three big ones give me a going over with fat sticks till all my bones are cracked, and they show me where the pamphlets say to overthrow the Tsar. Who wants to overthrow the Tsar? Personally, I have only the biggest regard, the highest regard for Nicholas II and the royal family, especially the young princess and the poor sick boy, who I love as my own. But nobody believed me, and that's why I'm here. It's all the fault of those bastard pamphlets. It's a mistaken identity with me, said Akinch. What's it, what is it with you, pal? The same, says Yaakov. What did they say you did? He thought he oughtn't to tell them, but it came out quickly, an accusation of the accusers. They say I killed a boy. It's a dirty lie. There was a deep silence in the cell. Now I've blundered, Yaakov thought. He looked for the guard, but he had gone for the soup pail. The two on the straw pallets, their heads together, whispered in each other's ears, first Akimich whispering, then Potsikin. Did you? Akimich asked Yakov. No, of course not. Why would I kill an innocent child? They whispered once more, and Potoskin said in a thick voice, Tell us the truth. Are you a Jew? What difference would it make? Yakov said. But when they were whispering again, he was afraid. Don't try anything, or I'll call the guard. The one in rags got up and approached the fixer, sneering. So you're the bastard Jew who killed the Christian boy and sucked the blood out of his bones. I saw it in the papers. Leave me in peace, Yaakov said. I've done nothing like that to anybody, not to speak of a 12-year-old child. It's not in my nature. You're a stinking Jew liar. Think as you like, but let me alone. Who else would do anything like that but a motherfucking jeed? Potoskin pounced on the fixer with his rotten teeth tried to bite his neck. Yaakov shoved him off, but Akimich, foul breath, was on his back, beating the fixer's head and face with his clammy, bony hands. Christ killer! Gewalt! cried Yaakov, flaying his arms. Though he whirled, Dugton struck out with his fists, but Toskin hit him with a knee in the back, as Akimich struck him on the neck with both fists. The fixer went down, his mind darkened in pain, he lay motionless, as they kicked him savagely and felt as he passed out a terrible rage. Afterwards he woke on his mattress. When he heard their snoring wretched, a rat scuttled across his genitals and he bolted up in horror. But there was a bit of horned moon 
at the small high barred window and watch for a while in peace. <laughs>